Courtney and welcome to Courtney's Cakes. Today we're going to be doing a Halloween theme. Since it's October already, we might as well go ahead and start celebrating Halloween. So we're going to do that with a cat cake. Um, for this, you're going to need a recipe of the dark chocolate cake and the dark chocolate icing that I colored black. All the recipes and stuff will be down below. And for this recipe, I made these six inch um, size cakes. This actually made four layers, but I'm only going to use three. So if the other one you can use um, if you want to, or you can take and put it in the freezer and use it later for something else. Okay. Put a little ice in there at the bottom. And I've already colored mine black. And if your cakes are not really level, you can take and level it off with a serrated knife. This one's pretty level, so I'm not going to cut any of this away. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put us some icing in a bag. And I'm not going to use a tip for this. And if you want to make it a little easier, sometimes I put my bag in a cup. That way I don't have to hold it when I put the icing down in there. Okay, and I'm just going to ice the top of this. And I like to put it in a bag and ice it like this. So when I go to smooth it out, it just makes it easier. And I'm not worried about messing up the top part of my cake. Because pretty much all I gotta do is just smooth it out a little bit. Okay, these cakes have a little bit of a dome to it. And I'm trying to make this cake as flat as possible. And you can take and use a cake leveler if you want to. Okay. All right, then we're gonna ice that one. I'm gonna take and flip this one over since it'll be nice and flat on the, what would be the bottom when you bake it. All right, and let's ice that. Okay, and I'm also going to go ahead and ice the sides. And I'm just gonna fill in any cracks with my icing. I'm gonna do that first since it'll probably take a little more. And then just start covering your entire cake and then we'll smooth it out. Okay, now we're going to make the ears for the cat because we need to let these dry. This is black melting chocolate and I put about three fourths of this uh, bottle full of the, uh, when they're not melted or whatever. And then about a fourth a teaspoon of uh, coconut oil to kind of make it a little runnier. And um, then I took wax paper and drew me some triangles and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put it on the counter here and draw them out. But then I'm gonna take and lay them on this flour. I don't know what you call it, some kind of flour thing. You, you can buy them at any baking type store. But anyways, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a curve uh, when it dries. And I'm just gonna take an outline at first and then fill it in. And you can just use the tip of it to kind of smooth out your chocolate as you go. And you're going to do this kind of fast. That way you can go ahead and put it on this board. Because you want to get them to have that shape. Alright. And we're going to take it very gently. Take it and put it in that little dip there. And, all right, and I'm going to put these in the fridge and let them sit. Okay, I did the same thing with my white chocolate as I did the same amount. So I'm going to take... And do a little test strip over to the side because when I first did it, the black chocolate was still in this tip. Even though I cleaned it, I thought I cleaned it really good. Obviously, I didn't clean it good enough. And we're just going to do a little bit of the center. Okay, and we're taking we're put these in the fridge and let them harden. Okay, while we wait for our ears to dry, we're going to make our little hat. And for this, I'm going to use a little bit of black fondant to cover a ice cream cone, the pointy kind, not the one that has like the little flat top. And anytime, and I have this problem a lot with my black fondant, it seems to dry out a little faster than like my white and stuff. You can just add a little bit of Crisco to it and it should, don't take a lot, but just rub it into it and it should soften it up and make it a little more where you can, you know, Make it to the shape you want without having all the cracks in. Okay. All right, I think I 
got enough, so I'm gonna cut it right there. And cut. Right, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna cut off the edge so it's flat. All right, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna try to make this as even as possible. So I'm gonna cut a little bit off of that end because I want one seam down the back. And the good thing is, is you can just kind of mold it to the way you want it. And I don't want this to be perfect. I kind of want it to take a little bit of the pattern of our cone because a witch's hat sometimes doesn't look very pretty. So we're going to do it kind of like it's worn a little bit. That's what the look I want. So that's fine if you have to add a little to the top or something like that. All right, this circle is a little bit, it's probably about two and a half inches. Okay, that's good. I just wanted a lip around my, I'm gonna flatten this just a hair because I don't want to go up to the next size because it would be way too big for our cake. Okay. All right, so that. Okay, we're gonna take our hat and I'm gonna brush a little water on the edge of our fondant on the cone and I'm gonna set it down there. That way it sticks. But next we're gonna do orange, which is gonna be our band to go around our little hat. All right, there we go. Okay, make sure it fits. And it does. So we're gonna take a little bit of water and I'm putting this at the seam in the back. So that not everybody can see if it doesn't look that great. And just cut it to size. And just cut it to size. Take a little bit more water with your brush. Push it on there. And our next thing is we're gonna make a collar for our cat. It's gonna be out of purple. All right, this purple that I'm using is violet. Is what it's listed as and this is wilton's brand good lord i'm getting that all over me um of gel food coloring that i'm using again you don't need a lot of this because i don't want it to overpower the kitty's face and everything so we're just gonna do a small maybe half an inch and I have cutters that it will exactly measure out but I'm using this as if I didn't have them so I do have them I have everything when it comes to making <laughs> or I think I do I have a lot of stuff so I think I try every every gadget they make or anything like that okay and now we're just going to take and we're gonna wrap it around oh my gosh it actually fits i'm surprised and just kind of press it into the cake a little bit and cut off the excess all right now we're going to take our little hat and we're going to set it kind of towards the front and the middle all right, the next thing I'm going to do is make the eyes. And I'm going to do this out of fondant. You can do this out of ice and it would probably be a whole lot easier. But because everything I made was black icing, I didn't want to have to make white icing for literally just a couple little things on the cake. So, whoo, I'm going to use my little thing that makes different size I don't know what you call this thing but anyways you can find it at like Hobby Lobby or something you can make grass with it you can make uh good lord there's a bunch of different circle ones and I use it a lot when I want to make um uh, a nice straight line um and I'm going to use the smallest one if you can see that in my little kit and I'm going to use this to make the eyes and the eyelashes. And it makes the perfect little line. 
and I always make a lot more because you can always ball it back up and use it again. And then just make one more little eyelash on the top. And it'll push right into the cake. So there's our little. And you can always, if you mess up, take them out or take it off and redo it. It's not going to hurt anything. Because you can always smooth out your icing. Next, I'm going to do me a little nose. And I'm just going to take and roll it into a ball. And then very lightly press it. And it should stick right to your cake. We're going to do the whiskers out of fondant too. And there you have it. Our cute little kitty cake for Halloween. If you have any questions or anything, put them down below and I'll be glad to answer them for you. And I'll also have all the recipes, all the supplies, anything listed that you'll need to make for this cake. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.